Okay, the question eight on the May June two thousand eight paper um, mechanics. We we finished off just getting to part C, so let's have a look at part D onwards. We just finished off the fact that the tension. We looked at particle P and we found the tension as twelve newtons, and we could have looked at particle Q to find out that twelve newtons as well, but. Um, there was a slightly more complicated because there's three forces, the 30, the T, and the friction, as opposed to just the two forces acting on particle P. So this classic question is always worth one mark. Um, sometimes they're worth two, and they have to write two sentences. Um, in this case, it says, they have used information that string is inextensible. Now, in this case, it's nice and uh, straightforward, really easy. So the fact that the string is inextensible just means that um, a particle... Q and particle P have the same acceleration or well, and the same system as well as so particle Q and particle P and the whole system together uh, have the same acceleration. Now that's kind of going to kind of play a part in this next part. This, this question is a classic question. It should be an easy one mark. You should just learn the, the definitions of inextensible, of light, of um, all these questions. They come up in every paper. There's always one question like this. So it's really, really important that you just pick up that free mark. If we look at this now, we've now what's happened is the particles move for three seconds and the force F is removed. So what we can do is we can assume that the now the string is not taut anymore. There's nothing pulling in this. Q is not now pulling on P, the strings become loose, and you can just consider P as a particle on its own. Just before we do that, let's find out the, the speed that um, P was moving, uh, uh, Q was moving just before the force was removed, the force F was removed. So that Really, we want to consider the final velocity of the system that was moving when P and Q were connected by that taut string is really the initial velocity of Q. So let's do a nice little SUVAT. And then we'll find out that for those three seconds that the force was there, it travelled six metres from the original information. It was three seconds. We know that the acceleration of the system was four thirds, and we know it initially started at rest. So to find the final velocity, we can use the nice easy V equals U plus AT, constant acceleration formula. So we know that V is equal to naught plus four thirds of three, so we know that therefore that V is equal to four ms minus one. So that's the final velocity of the system, which is actually going to be the initial velocity of our Q. Now we're considering Q on its own because it's not part of the system, no force pulling it along, so the string is now going to become loose and um, P is just going to kind of be its own little particle, Q is going to be its own little particle. So let's get various elements. Well, the weight is still acting down and the reaction is still acting up and they will remain unchanged. So the reaction of Q and the weight, 3G, there's no longer force acting to the right, just the friction is the only uh, horizontal force. And this is going to be, we're going to call this like before, the friction of Q. Okay? So, if we now consider Q on its own, so if we just consider the particle Q, and we just fill in the information that we've got, we want to find out the time before it comes to rest. So we want to know its final velocity is zero. We know its initial velocity was four, based on the final velocity as a system. We don't know how far it travels, and we don't know its acceleration. Although we can now calculate acceleration. That would be useful. If we could calculate acceleration, we can use V equals U plus AT again. So all we've got to do to do that is let's resolve cross. So if we consider the right as positive, 
what we're going to find out is we're going to have well let's just put this on our diagram the acceleration is what we don't know and it's actually we should find out this is a negative the acceleration should be to the left should be a deceleration that's acting so there's no force causing it to accelerate but we'll, that's a good check mental check so friction of q is acting to the left the mass times acceleration here so we know the friction of q is um, we know that f is equal to mu r so it's minus mu reaction of q is equal to 3a and we know that mu is 10 over 21, so it's minus 10 over 21. We know the reaction of Q is 3G is equal to 3A. Reorganising all of this, we find out that the acceleration is minus 14 over 3 ms minus 2, which is what we expected. We wanted the negative acceleration. We wanted it to really wanted to be decelerating, although our diagram shows it's positive here. Actually, negative ones means it's acting the other way, so it's a deceleration, and that's what we want because Q is going to come to rest. So we can now put that over in here, minus 14 over 3 in here, and the final little step we've got to do is V is equal to U plus AT. So our final velocity is 0, our initial velocity was 4 on its own, plus the acceleration, which is minus 14 over 3T. So we rearrange all that and we find out that t is equal to 6 seventh seconds. So if we want to find a rounded answer, we know that time that q travels in its own is 0 0.857 seconds, three significant figures. And that finishes off part D and E for this question.